And we pay $50 for each wrong vote. We pay $500 if nobody guesses right and Bert Convey starts. Oh, um, I'm still looking at them. I, um, um, I think they're all lying, is what I think. No, <laughs> no, I really don't. I think it's number three. Uh, he seemed to know a little bit more about the others, and he seemed uh, kind of fond of them. I, I go for number three. All right, there's one for three, and uh, Peggy. Well, I go for number three, but I'm Never voting for number one because <laughs> uh, he said something about the wolf's hair structure, and a wolf has a very coarse coat, so his hair structure must be different than, for instance, your hair structure. Yes. No. Well, Quite... I'm not that kind of wolf anyway. Yes, you are. Why <laughs> true? <laughs> We got a three and a one. Now we're going to go to Bill Cullen. That's funny. I go for number one, but I'm going to vote for number three. Uh, no, he has a look of a kind man whose wife brings a little wolf home and he's just come in. <laughs> I would do it. <laughs> All right, Kitty, what are you going to do I'm about going to this? vote for number three. I'm furious. I didn't find out where the original puppy came from, but maybe we can find that out later. Oh, maybe there are lots of things we can find out later. Like, for instance, we can find out. Will the real John Harris please stand up? Hi! <laughs> nice morning, Parsley. And for the first time this week, we skunked the panel totally. It cost us $500, which we cheerfully give to everybody. Yes, great. Let's find out about the imposters. Number one, what is your... Uh, what is your real name, sir? What do you do? My name is Jack Evans, and I do the overnight show on WTFM Radio in New York. Hear it every night. <laughs> and number three with three big votes. What is your real name, please, and what do you do? My name is Tony Lafko. I'm a professional skier and director of public relations at Vernon Valley Ski Area in New Jersey. Uh. John Harris, is, does your interest in wildlife uh, manifest itself in the form of any organization? Or? Yes, we have an organization called the North American Association for Preservation of Predatory Animals. Uh huh. And we're located in Oakland, California. And, and what have you been able to achieve? Well, we, we're mainly doing animal behavior study, and we also take wolves into different classrooms throughout the country to educate the public to what a wolf really is. I'm going to tell you, one thing is, this is strong, because I walked him through once before the show started. We walked right down the front of the stage and right off stage and out, and he took me with him. And that's been a good experience. John Harris and friends, thank you very much for being with us on To Tell the Truth. So long, Jethro. Well, now that we have seen a very handsome wolf, let's take a look at a picture of a very handsome gentleman. Now, this romantic-looking young man is one of the most famous novelists in history. Almost all of us have read Ivanhoe, but few would recognize... Right, Sir Walter Scott, as painted by the Scottish portraitist Sir Henry Rayburn. And our next guest on To Tell the Truth today is a direct descendant of Sir Walter Scott, and we will meet her right after a few moments. Are the aches and pain? Two five two. That's one eight hundred five two eight five two five two. Now let us meet Sir Walter Scott's descendants. <laughs> Number one, what is your name, please? My name is Patricia Maxwell Scott, and this is one of the quill pens used by Sir Walter Scott when writing his novels. Number two. My name is Patricia Maxwell Scott, and this is a little coin purse used by Sir Walter Scott, and it's made of moleskin and silver. Number three. My name is Patricia Maxwell Scott, and this is a lock of hair from the head of my great-great-great-grandfather, Sir Walter Scott. All right. Which one do you believe? Here is Patricia Maxwell Scott's story. I, Patricia Maxwell Scott, am the great-great-great-granddaughter of Sir Walter Scott. Born 200 years ago, Sir Walter Scott is best known as the author of Ivanhoe and the Waverley novels. However, Sir Walter Scott was also one of the great Scottish patriots. He helped Scotland to reestablish its distinctive difference from the rest of Great Britain. He was responsible for the revival of the kilt and the tartan. Scott also personally found the Scottish crown jewels, which had been lost for 100 years. Sir Walter Scott's country home, Abbotsford, a handsome stone mansion of some 100 rooms, is open to the public today. 
It is kept exactly as it was when he was alive, and visitors are likely to find me conducting tours through my great-great-great-grandfather's home. Signed, Patricia Maxwell Scott. 